Well, welcome to Christian Answers. My name is Pastor Jeff Short, and today I'm going to be doing a review of the mini series on Netflix that was covering the topic of the Waco David Koresh Branch Davidian cult. It was a docu series where they had a six part series covering what actually happened in that tragic situation where. I think around 50 people, at least 50 people died as a result of a fire at this cult compound. And it involved the FBI and the ATF and other government authorities who were trying to get David Koresh, the cult leader, and his group out of their facility, their compound that they bought property in Waco, Texas. And the FBI used all kinds of military tactics to try to get them to come out. Eventually, uh, piercing the compound walls with tear gas, and then this tear gas exploded and caught on fire and burned the whole thing down, and many, many people died. But the whole big mess I wanted to talk about because it showed the danger of giving people giving their heart and soul over to another individual without comparing what that person is teaching with the Word of God. We're taught in the Bible. As Christians, we're taught in the Bible. As people who attend church, we're taught in the Bible to test all things and to hold on to or cling to that which is true. And we're to test all things by the Word of God. We have the Old Testament. We have the New Testament. Put them together. You have what is called the Holy Bible. Everything in the Holy Bible is the standard for truth. And if we get away from it, if we depart from it, if we let someone else manipulate us, if we are following someone else above the Bible, then we are putting ourselves in a position where we actually could be taken captive and deceived by a cult leader. And that's what happened to these people in the Branch Davidian cult through the leadership of this David Koresh. This David Koresh was a very hypnotic personality, very charismatic, not charismatic in the spiritual sense, but charismatic in the personality sense. He was a very intelligent person. Uh, Perhaps he had photographic memory. He was able to memorize vast chunks of the whole entire Bible. Um, Some people at the compound, this cult uh, group, said that he had memorized the whole New Testament. I don't know about that. Uh, But we can imagine an individual who has a really sharp mind and a really good memory and can impress you if you talk to him about how he can quote scriptures and just the word of God, God's word is on the tip of his tongue. So that can fool people. You can begin to think, oh, this guy knows the Bible. Knowing how to quote scripture and knowing the Bible doesn't mean putting the Bible together properly or interpreting the Bible properly. There are some very, very clever people who know how to use the word of God for their own ends. And here was one, David Koresh. He seemed to have a very uh, likable personality. He was very uh, influential. The only problem was that he was delusional. He was, you might even call crazy or insane. And it's possible to be fooled by someone who has a sharp mind and who has a good memory and is very clever, but yet is totally crazy. And that's what this man was. He was crazy, mentally unstable, you might say. Now, he hasn't been diagnosed by a psychologist. He's never gone in for psychiatric tests. But if he were to go into a counselor's office, a therapist's office, psychiatrist, psychologist's office, and have an evaluation, they probably would have found heavy doses of narcissism, Uh, delusions of grandeur, a messiah complex. He got to the point where he actually believed that when he was reading the Bible, 
And when he was reading the book of Revelations, he was reading about himself as the lamb who was opening the seven seals and all kinds of imagery. He was putting himself in the scriptures in the book of Revelation and saying, that's me, and I'm about ready to do this. So in, in other words, he was reading himself into Bible passages and personalizing Bible passages, and not only leading himself into that delusion, but he was leading a group of people into that delusion. Now, not a lot, relatively speaking, not a whole lot of people, but a hundred and some people, that is not a small number, it's not a big number. It's about the size, you might say, that his group, his cult following, was about the same size as a typical Protestant church in the United States. It was a maybe even just a little bit larger than a typical Protestant church. I think the typical Protestant church is between 75 and 100 people. And David Koresh's group was over 100, uh, 100, 125 maybe possibly even up to 150, but he was able to take his personalized scriptural interpretations and convince these people that he was the Messiah. He was the one. He he was the one that they needed to listen to and that only he could interpret the Bible. Now, you might say, well, these people were must have been uneducated, untrained, unsophisticated, kind of backwards people gullible. No, they really weren't. Uh, and that's really the scary thing about this miniseries is that actually one of them was a doctor of theology teaching at the University of Hawaii. The University of Hawaii, this theological professor of sorts with a PhD, was teaching at the University of Hawaii, was recruited to the Branch Davidians and came over and became second in charge next to David Koresh. Can you believe that? Can you actually believe that? That intelligent people. There was also someone part of this cult who had been a Harvard Law School trained lawyer. Really, actually, at Harvard Law School. Now, Harvard Law School is hard to get into. This is the elite of the elite law schools in the United States. And yet this individual was recruited by David Koresh and came into this cult. He was sucked into this cult and was impressed enough by David Koresh and his teachings to actually join. So it gives us all pause to think and be warned. Don't think you can't fall for things. You can. What, is it, what does the Bible say? Uh, if you think that you're above deception, take heed lest you fall. The Bible warns us about that. Don't think too highly of yourself. Don't think you're above temptation. Don't think you're above deception. Because that pride, that cockiness, that overconfidence can lead to you falling into something like this. And so it wasn't the case that this cult group, this David Koresh following in Waco, Texas, it wasn't that they were ignorant, backwards people uh, raised out of the mainstream uh, up in the hills somewhere and never uh, were exposed to the world and then were mesmerized by someone who was a fast talker uh, and a personality and were overwhelmed. No, don't think that way. There were intelligent people, otherwise intelligent people. There were people who were above intelligence in their IQ, for example. I mean, to get into Harvard Law School, you have to be smart. You have to be sharp. And that guy was sharp, he was smart, and yet he was deceived enough to follow David Koresh into this cult and actually ultimately on to his death. And the same way with this uh, theologian that taught at the University of Hawaii. This guy moved with his wife to Waco, Waco, I was going to say Waco, to be a part of the David Koresh cult. Now you would think, how could this guy who, who had studied the Bible, who knew theology, how could be, he be sucked into this? And I believe what sucked them into it was the 
avenue that many of these people started out in now they most of these people many of these people were affiliated with the seventh day adventist church now the seventh day adventist church if you look into the history of christianity in the united states if you look in some of the cult books and the cult experts for example walter martin used to be a cult expert before he died about 20 or 30 years ago and he looked at seventh day adventists in comparison to some of these other cults that we know the major cults like mormonism and jehovah's witness and christian science and all of these other popular cults he looked at seventh day adventists and said no they're not in that category they are christian but they have grossly aberrant christian theology in other words they had some doctrines that were very very bizarre and strange but in the norm they were christian and they are christians so you can be a christian and be off in your theology in certain other areas we see that all the time we see that in certain teachings about prosperity and and, and about uh, and about uh, name it and claim it healing and all this thing you know uh, in other words uh, certain truths can be taken to an extreme the bible does teach that if you follow the ways of the lord uh, nine times out of ten you will be blessed it teaches in the book of proverbs for example that if you do this 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 god will generally bless you he will make his face shine upon you uh, you will prosper, you will be in health, and all those kind of things. Those are general principles that we can use and we can utilize in our life, and they apply. But it's not a guarantee of healing, and it's not a guarantee of prosperity. There are passages in the Bible that said, um, if you have faith to believe, you shall receive. And it, and it shows healing in the Bible. Jesus healed, the apostles healed others healed in the bible so there is healing available but it's not guaranteed again so you can take a basic truth and take it to an extreme and then it becomes aberrant it becomes um, a, a strange doctrine and a false doctrine if you push a truth farther than it's supposed to go and that's what we see in different parts of christianity today we don't call into question the Christianity of people with certain doctrinal uh, errors. We only say that they're wrong in these areas. Well, the Seventh-day Adventist Church was founded by a woman uh, named Ellen G. White. And Ellen G. White claimed to have revelations from God. And people uh, gathered around her, and she, to their thinking, they... The revelation that she had made sense. She's, she wrote many books, she lectured, and she drew people into the church through her teachings, which were more or less Christian. They were more or less mainstream Christianity, only she claimed to be a true prophetic voice and that they would uh, be wise to follow her because she's speaking for God and so on and so forth. So you had this woman who was functioning as sort of the official interpreter of the bible and she was claiming the holy spirit was speaking through her and so on and so forth that's the uh seventh day adventist church and they still to this day uh look up to the writings of ellen g white okay now a lot of these cult members who were part of the David Koresh cult, even David Koresh himself, started out as Seventh-day Adventists. Now, that isn't to besmirch the Seventh-day Adventist church today as a whole, but you can see where the doorway was that brought these people and David Koresh into error, and that was that well, they had already accepted the fact that there could be this mighty prophet rising up and being the spokesman of God on earth for the time. And so they already had that in Ellen G. White. And so they already accepted her revelation as truthful. And they perhaps wouldn't say that it was on a par with the Bible. But if you accept that what she said as a prophet was from God, then you're de facto saying that what she's saying is truth and truth is truth and so you have the bible and then you have the teachings of ellen g white and so they all go together 
And you, you saw that also even in a more radical form in the writings of Joseph Smith, for example. Joseph Smith, in the same way, was considered a prophet and, and that God was using him and speaking through him and you had to listen to him because he knew what he was talking about because God sent him and God told him to say this, so you better listen to him or else you weren't listening to God. Okay, that is a radical, extreme form of it. And then the Seventh-day Adventist toward Ellen G. White was a more mild form. But then with David Koresh, he began to take on that same function, that he was a prophet, you needed to listen to him, and that he was speaking words of God, and others didn't know what he knew because God was speaking through him. Okay, so he found, David Koresh found a group of people who were already in that mindset. They already accepted the fact that there could be this mighty prophet sent from God that they needed to listen to. And so when he began to proclaim himself that and began to teach this way, and he also had a great personality and he was very smart and he was very intuitive and he could speak and hold people spellbound and so on and so forth. You put all that together and you have 100, 150 people listening to the words of this man and taking his words as the word of God. So they were not testing him because they had already accepted that what he had said was from God. They already made that assumption. So if you make the assumption that someone is a prophet of God, then you don't have to go back and test everything they say because you've already assumed that what they're saying is a continuation of what the Bible is teaching from, say, people like Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. In the Old Testament, these prophets spoke from God. And, you know, Paul, Peter, the gospel writers, and so forth. You, If you already accept that they were prophets from God, they spoke from God, then if you believe in that, a uh, modern-day prophet could rise up and speak the same thing, then you would accept that also. And that's what they did with David Koresh. That was the error of this group. That was the error of the PhD theologian that taught in University of Hawaii that was recruited. That was the error of the Harvard Law School graduate that was recruited in this group and bought into it. That was the error of all the other people, everyday people from all kinds of works of lines of work, just regular people some wealthier, some poor, some middle income. It was, and, and there was uh, uh, racial integration in there. There were blacks, whites, Hispanics, different uh, group uh, people. It was all mixed together because they bought into that one assumption, that false assumption, and that was that David Koresh was a prophet of God. They needed to listen to him. And they didn't compare what he said with the Bible. That was the main problem. And so what happened was when word got out that the Branch Davidians and David Koresh, they had a weapons cache that they were selling guns, they were modifying guns, they were making money by selling guns, and going to gun shows and doing things like that, the federal government was concerned and wanted to investigate this. And so they sent up some people to live near this cult to spy on them and even to infiltrate them, to go to some of the meetings to find out if they could see if there was an arsenal here at the compound. And so their guy went in there, infiltrated them, and then the FBI thought, hey, this would be a great opportunity. They had just come off a really bad situation in what is called Ruby Ridge, where they, the, the ATF and the FBI had actually accidentally shot a, a woman and her child in a small cabin in the woods, in the hills, Ruby Ridge. And it was a total disaster. I mean, um, a bungled, blundered mission by these officers to go in and try to find out about this couple who were living in this log cabin. And they wound up shooting the son and wound up shooting the woman, the wife. And so eventually, though, the man did surrender and 
And so the Bureau, I guess the ATF and the FBI were under fire. They had blown it in this instance, so they wanted to redeem themselves. And so they found this David Koresh cult might be the, their opportunity to go in and do something good and show the world that they still had the ability to conduct operations and successfully carry out a mission. And so their mission was to get this uh, David Koresh and his cult members out and find out what they were doing. Well, as we all know now, and as this documentary and docu-series shows, they bungled this worse than anything. This is the biggest blunder in the FBI history, perhaps. And they went in and they did everything wrong. Uh, the lead negotiator told them, you need to wait, you need to be patient with these people. Um, the FBI directors were not wanting to be patient, and so they came in and tried to force the hand of these people. And what happened was the whole building compound headquarters went up in flames and killed, I think, between 50 and 100 people. And it was a tragedy, a terrible, terrible tragedy, totally unnecessary totally a bungled operation but to understand the cult was what i was interested in i wanted to understand what these people were doing and and, and try to understand why people regular people and even intelligent people would just surrender their wills and surrender their minds to this cult leader and it's basically because they did not compare what he was teaching with the word of god uh, another thing is that the church, this Branch Davidian church, was not structured according to the, the New Testament pattern. They did not have accountability in their church. A church is supposed to have elders or some group of men who are qualified to hold the church accountable and to hold each other accountable. So it's not just the pastor. The pastor doesn't make all the decisions. The pastor doesn't control everything in the church. The pastor is under the authority of the elders, and the elders are under authority of the people. And so the people select the elders, and then the elders are supposed to be the most mature and wise men in the church. It's supposed to be male leadership. That's the pa pattern in the Bible. That's the teachings in the New Testament. And the pastor is supposed to function in coordination with the elders. He's held accountable by the elders. And in this situation, David Koresh basically was the leadership of the church. Sure, he would ask for advice. He would seek counsel. But he was the one that determined everything. He just made all the decisions. And in fact, he would claim that he was only doing what God was telling him to do. So, he did, so you, if you questioned him, you were, in effect, supposed to be questioning God. And nobody wanted to do that because they had already assumed that he was the prophet of God and that God spoke through him. Very dangerous situation. Totally contrary to the New Testament. So um, the New Testament actually says if a prophet or someone speaking prophetically makes an utterance, you're supposed to test it. You're supposed to judge it. So, you know, the elders of the church are supposed to say, well, what did this person say, and how does that line up with what we know is God's word? They didn't do that here. In this cult situation, and this is one of the problems, and this is how they deceive themselves, and that's why all churches, whether they're thoroughly Christian or whether they're marginally Christian, they all need to have a accountability structure that doesn't let one person make all the decisions. And so when you're in a church and the pastor is starts talking and acting like he's the one that has to make all the decisions, he makes all the calls, he controls everything from the finances uh, into people's lives, you better get out of there because he is not operating under a biblical model. And these uh, Branch Davidians under David Koresh were not operating under a biblical model. Now, you would have thought that this so-called theologian that was there, this PhD in theology that was part of the cult, you would have thought he would have known, hey, wait, we have to have a structure where even David Koresh is accountable because 
because of the fallenness of man. The reason why there there's a need for accountability is because we're all fallen. We all have original sin. Even after you're saved, even after you're born again, even after you your heart is regenerated by the Holy Spirit, you still battle temptations and sins. And we know this all too well in today's world. We see pastors who seemingly have great things going at their church. Their church is growing, and all of a sudden they're removed because of some sin. Well, why is that? Because they're fallen. Um, the reason why maybe they fall into sin is that they're not as accountable as they need to be. People need to be held accountable. Um, and the little signs that something is wrong needs to be followed up. And if if they need help, get them help. If they need removed, remove them, rebuke them, correct them, whatever it needs to be done, but you just don't let someone go on in error. And that's what they did with David Koresh. They put him on a pedestal. They thought of him as the voice of God, and then they couldn't correct him because you can't correct the voice of God if it's the voice of God. So they had a false assumption, which led to false behavior, and it deceived them all, and ultimately it led to their death, because David Koresh led them to a fiery death, because he would not consent to leave the compound, because he was afraid he would go to jail. And he didn't want to do that, so I guess everybody had to die, because uh, David Koresh didn't want to go to jail. So we can learn a lot from this tragic lesson. We've seen this happen before with, for example, the Jim Jones down in Jonestown in Guyana. Uh, we've, we've seen that uh, happen time and time again. It seems like every 20 or 10 or 20 or 30 years, some cult leader leads a group of followers to their death. And the reason this kind of thing keeps happening and happening and happening is because people simply don't follow the Bible. And that's a good warning to all of us. We must always hold fast to the Word of God. Don't take any pastor's word for it. Don't take your pastor's word for it. Don't take your denomination's word for it. If someone is teaching you something that sounds strange, Make them show you in the Bible where it teaches that and make them show you from the text and the passages and convince you that that's what it actually means. Because there were all kinds of things going on in this Branch Davidian cult that people with common sense and respect for the Bible as the Word of God should have caught, but they didn't because they were hypnotized and memorized by a very flamboyant personality, a very energetic and enthusiastic personality. They were impressed with his Bible knowledge, impressed with his personality, and they were led astray. So don't you be led astray. Cling to the Word of God. Read the Bible every day. Know what it says so that you will not be deceived by these false teachers. Well, we'll see you back next week on another edition of Christian Answers. God bless.